Holy in a bulkhead, Batman! Hello there, Dark Knights. Welcome back to Build with the Boys. We now have issue 53 of Hashit's Build the Batman Build Tumblr. Um, in this one, we'll be building the inner bulkhead. So, it looks quite nice, this, because even though, like with everything with the Tumblr, it's light work. Um, the colouring's really nice. So we get some um, some gas tanks and that very nice kind of coppery bronze colour. It looks nice. Um, and you definitely need colour to the Batman build that's all black. You need something. It can't just all be black. Um, you, you need some colour. And this colour really will enhance this. Uh, we will be using the piece that we built in the last one. So uh, the piece with the jet engine, we'll be doing that and be adding to that as well. Um, and it is, it is a fairly chunky old piece, this, once this is done. Um, unfortunately, it's not all bolting together yet. It is what it is. Um, but let's get this one open. Let's get this one done. At the end of this one, we'll be continuing our journey into the cinematic universe of Batman. Now, you would think, because we've covered Batman Begins, and we also covered um, Superman Returns, that we'd be going to uh, The Dark Knight. We're not. There was a Batman movie uh, being made before uh, The Dark Knight. Um, and we will talk all about what happened with Justice League Mortal uh, over the next six issues. Um, so it's a very bizarre story, uh, but tune in for it. But this this was legit. This wasn't like something suggested. They, they were, this was being made. Um, but without further ado, let's get this one open. Let's get this one built. Okay, so this is 53. Let's see what comes inside of this. Uh, okay, we have some CM and some AP screws there. In this box. Please stop printing Batman logos on the boxes. Don't need to. Doesn't bring any value to the model. It's massively pointless. Hush it. Don't do it. Um, there we go. So we have these tanks here. Uh, these are plastic. Um, so these are, uh, these are detailing, but they look nice. The colour looks good. Uh, we have those there. We have two sets of screws. So that's a CM and an AP screw. So AP, these will be got into plastic. These will be got into metal. And then we have the actual uh, inner bulkhead itself. So this looks like it'll be fairly simple. Now, these are not going to attach to that. There's nowhere for that to go. So what we're going to do is going to bring over the piece that we built in the last one, because they will be attaching to that. Okay, so here is our, uh, our jet engine and bulkhead from the... Uh, the last issue, and what we're going to do is quite simply, we are going to take one set of our uh, our tanks here, and they are going to fit in here. There we go, so those are in there. And then we're gonna flip this one over and we're gonna screw this in using two of the AP screws. So let's get that done. So coming in from the reverse side, I'm gonna pop in a single AP screw just to hold it in place to begin with. These are very little screws. But that's okay. I mean, again, this is something that's not load bearing or anything like this. this is to hold it on. So you need to screw these in so you get some bite of that plastic and it's firm and then stop. Don't over screw these. Just one. And then we're going to repeat the exact same process. So if we turn this one over. Uh, so we've got our first one in there, and we're going to take a second tank and line this one up. There we go. Flip this one back over. And now two AP screws again. Let's hold this one in place. So we're going to go in here. One, and here is number two. There we go, nice and firm. Uh, and we have both of those in, so let's take a look what that looks like. So That is how we're now looking. I thought it was lovely. I mean, that really, I love this bronze, this kind of copper colour. I think it's stunning. You see this on the, uh, on the 
the jet engine as well. Really nice. Okay, next thing we do is fit the actual uh, inner bulkhead itself. Okay, to take our inner bulkhead here, what we're going to do is this has got a, uh, a lip here. The wire from here is going to fold down and come up through that. So that's how we're going to be. And then we're going to fit this into place. And we're going to hold this in with four of the CM screws. So let's get this into place to begin with. <laughs> it works. It's just a case of wiggle and find, really. And then you find your spot and you're out. You're good. There we go. There we have it. Now we've got to hold this in place with four of the CM screws. So I'm going to pop one there, one there, one there, one there. I'm going to get one in to hold and then uh, we'll uh, we'll see the rest. Okay, so that's one in just sort of hold it. Uh, now we can see we're putting the rest. So we've got pop one in there. I'm going to put one in in the opposing diagonal. There we go. Now these are going into metal, but I've chosen not to oil these because they're not going that far. They're small screws. And to be honest with you, I don't think I need it for this. It feels like a bit overkill. There we go. It's two. Three and one last one. So this is a big old lump. I mean this is the the rear end of the vehicle. But as far as I'm aware, we're not fitting this anywhere. I think this is us done with the rear end of the vehicle for now, I believe. Um we are going to take a very strange detour uh, in this uh, this pack, but that's where we are. So those are all in, and that is stage fifty-three complete. Let's have a look what we're looking at. So that's how you you are, uh, you know, looking from the sides. We've got our wire, and it's uh, it's how it needs to be. And that looks nice. I think I I do like these tanks. I really like these tanks. I mean, how much of those tanks you're going to see, I don't know, because the wheels are going to be like here, but um. They look nice. I think it looks good. Let's have a chat. So there we go. Nice and simple. Um, looks nice. It's brought some colour to this. Much needed colour on a very black vehicle. It's a much needed colour. It's a nice detail as well. I mean, you will see behind the wheels. You'll see these there. And it looks good. It looks nice. Um, there's been a lot. I mean, again, we, we keep talking about this, but oh, there's not much to do. I don't know what cars you're building. This is quite normal. <laughs> for the cars that we normally build, this is quite normal. The only thing strange is we don't have rolling chassis. That is weird. Everything else says it should be. Um, that's all for the build for this one. If you are sticking around for our bat chat. Uh, we're talking about the very bizarre circumstances that, that <laughs> surround this movie. So, things to know before we start. They're very happy with Batman Begins. Really happy with that. They weren't happy with, this is Warner Brothers, they weren't happy with Superman Returns. Even though Superman Returns wasn't a bomb, right? So it, it did make money, just not enough, right? So it made money, but they wanted it to make billions. It just didn't, um, which is weird, right? So it's it's not that they had a flop on their hands. They spent too much money on it. We discussed this in the last one. They spent too much money on Superman Returns. And as a result of that, it needed to make, like, close to a billion at the box office for it to, to have a decent return. Um, so you think they'd learned from that? They didn't. Um, and instead, they decide uh, what they originally said was, we want to make a Batman movie that doesn't focus on, a Superman movie that doesn't focus on inserting Superman into a Batman movie later on. They looked at The Dark Knight, they liked it, but thought this would look weird if we put Superman in it, which I agree with it would, because it was very ground... Granted, as, as close to reality as you can get for those movies. Um, so, <laughs> instead of making another independent Superman movie, they decide they're going to make the Justice League, and they, they go full steam ahead on on making the Justice League. So, a husband and wife duo are 
hired to write it. They do. And the script gets a lot of buzz. People really, you know, they're really into it. So they decide we're going for it. And the reason for this is this happened during the financial downturn of 2007. So the other thing that was coming out of this was the writer's strike. Now, some of you won't remember this writer's strike. Some of you will remember this writer's strike. There was the, the last big writer's strike was in 2008. Um, so they were very eager to get this one made before that happened. So they went fast track. So they're still happy. This is where it's weird. They're still happy that Nolan's making his Batman movies, but they also want a second Batman. So they they don't approach Nolan to direct this. They don't approach they don't approach um, Christian Bale to be Batman in it, and they don't approach Brandon Routh to play Superman in it. Uh, they want what is ultimately multiple Batmans. So they want Batman in this movie and Batman in um, the Nolan trilogies. I don't know. Uh, Warner Brothers been hell bent on doing that. And it looks like they are going to do that with the uh, the new franchises they have, but. So this upsets Christopher Nolan, it upsets Christian Bale as well, because they're saying, well, hold on, we're making we're making Dark Knight here, and it, it's it's shaping up quite nicely. It's actually looking really good. And they're like, yeah, because they didn't have faith. They didn't have faith in it. They, they didn't think it was going to be great, is is the reality. So this was almost like their um their safety net. And they did, they did throw a lot at this. So they signed on director George Miller. Uh, who George Miller was the director of the Mad Max movies. So the man's got some action chops. And one of the um, the complaints about Superman Returns was it was very light on action. Um, this one wasn't going to be. This one was going to be a kind of all-out actioner. Um, but they were putting everyone in this. So this this was this was a massive ensemble cast. Um, but they they, as I said, they went full steam ahead. So... It was all going to be filmed in Australia. This is where it gets weird. So this is downturn time. Because they're going to film in Australia, that's George Miller's home country, uh, you can get 40% tax relief for filming movies in Australia um, if you meet certain criteria. And part of that criteria is, is that the Film Commission of Australia have a say in who you cast in the movie. That just reeks of disaster, but they that's that's the way it is. So unless you hire enough Australians, you won't get the you won't get the commission. That's what's gonna happen. So they decided we're gonna have a completely Australian crew. So all of the everybody, the the, the, the I mean the director's Australian, all of the, the crew are Australian. So that's the carpenters, the, the set dressers, the makeup artists, everyone is Australian. Um it's gonna be filmed in Australia. And they are going to cast Australian actors in it. So three Australian actors, we go into who those were, are cast in very prominent roles. It was going to be a massive budget movie. Uh, the Commission of Australia looked to it. No, you've not hired enough Australians. It seems that they wanted a completely Australian cast. So they want everybody in it to be Australian. Uh, which then starts to get weird, doesn't it? That's that's when this starts to get unusual. Um, it's, yeah, so, but, so they refused. Uh, George Miller then started speaking out quite angrily about the, um, the Australian Film Commission. So delays are starting to happen already. So on a fast track production, delays are already starting to happen. It's like, oh, this isn't looking good already. But, um, I can remember the news. I remember reading the news on this one when it was first coming out and it was, it was a big story. It really was. Um, but it, um, it cooled really quick. But then they made the massive casting announcement where they're like, here's everyone. There was no kind of, mm, we're romancing this one, like they do now in Marvel movies. It was just like, here is the cast, bang. And they're all signed. They've, they've got all the cast and here is all of them. This is everything that's going to be in it. So it's no longer a rumour now. All these people are signed up. All these people are playing these people. And it's like, bloody hell, this is actually happening. And they did it. Now, those cast photos went out, everything of kind of all the cast together, doing a script read through. And it's like, wow, we will talk about who got cast in what role. Um, in the next one. And some of these people, you're going to go, who? Or you're, oh, that guy. There are very few. Ah, yeah, I know him. The, the, this is a relative cast of unknowns or people that had took a massive step up from television to now all of a sudden they're going to be the main uh, the main actor in a film. Uh, but we will talk about who got cast as who in the, uh, in the next one. Uh, thank you for stopping by. We will be back very, very soon with issue 54. Um... If you haven't yet, please remember to like and subscribe. It helps the channel massively. You can contact us at Bill and the Boys at Outlook.com. 
Um, in a world where you can be anything, just be nice and remember until next time, Gotham needs us. Take care and I'll see you soon.